So it really does come back to BRCA one and two. Uh, we just finished celebrating the 25th anniversary not that long ago. Um, and it was, uh, they were both cloned in the mid nineties. Uh, and by the end of the nineties, we were offering women prophylactic surgery. We were saying if we could remove the tissue that's at risk, perhaps we can reduce the mortality from this disease. Mind you, at the time, we didn't have the data to actually support that. It just made sense. A number of papers started to emerge. Literally, there's like two in particular around 2000, 2001, that said that when we do these prophylactic surgeries, we sometimes see some funny things in the fallopian tube. So I, I was going to use a slide, but I'm going to use myself as a prop. So hopefully you can all see me, right? If you look at my, my arm and my hand, right, and if you think of my torso as the uterus, my arm is the fallopian tube, and my fingers are the very distal end of the fallopian tube. This is what we call the fimbria. And the ovary usually sits right here, and the fimbria sort of kind of wraps itself around the ovary, moves around it, so that every month when that follicle gets released or an ovulation, it can make sure to grab that egg so it can travel down the fallopian tube. Okay. Now, we were focusing on ovarian cancer, so what we would do is take that ovary and submit it for histological evaluation in its entirety. But we didn't really think too much about the fallopian tube. In fact, the only thing we used to do is take a section through the middle, make sure that there was nothing in there. Okay? But you had these early papers in 2000, 2001 that said, you know, even when we take this sort of kind of cursory look at the fallopian tube, there were weird cells in there. And we saw those papers and we sort of kept in mind the fact that even though we looked at the entirety of the ovary, we never really found any early cancers, any silent cancers. And we started to wonder, were we missing the boat on this? Was this somehow paradoxical that we're looking for ovarian cancer, but we're finding some funny things in the tube? At the time, people interpreted this as, well, perhaps if you have a BRCA mutation, you're susceptible to both ovarian cancer and breast cancer. And hey, maybe it, this tubal cancer, which we thought was really rare. But we went back and asked, has anyone ever looked at the entirety of the fallopian tube systematically, right? And we looked in the literature and we found nothing. Right, to look at this. And so we were intrigued enough that we thought, you know what, let's develop a way to really look at the entire fallopian tube from these prophylactic specimens, from these young women who carry BRCA mutation. And what we noticed in a handful of these cases was that there were dysplastic, malignant looking cells at the very end of the fallopian tube. These cells looked exactly like what the tumor cells looked like. So we were like, well, we're looking for an ovarian cancer that looks like this. What's going on here? And so we started doing more cases and every single prophylactic specimen that came through, we did this. And what we found was that there were these early cancers in the very end of the fallopian tube, only the distal end. We didn't find it anywhere else along the length of the tube. It was really the business end where it interfaces with the ovary. All these malignant cells in these finger-like projections were early malignant cancer cells, early cancer cells. And when we did the genetic analysis, we realized that the ovarian tumor shared the exact same genetic features as these weird early cancers from the fallopian tube. So we started with this concept, maybe these ovarian cancers are really coming from the fallopian tube. And over the years, in fact, about uh, now three years ago, we published, um, I think, the first paper that really provided the genetic proof. Right. So what we did was we took these cases where we had the fallopian tube and we had the ovary um, in a, a cohort of women. And what we found is when we laser capture, you can use a laser to capture the cells at the very end of this fallopian tube and then look at the genetics. We found that the earliest lesions were present in these precursor cells in the fallopian tube. They would become a cancer in the fallopian tube and then shed to the ovary. And as each step progressed, they would acquire additional mutations really supporting that they came from the fallopian tube at a genetic level. Um, and it was, it was really looking at these women who had the BRCA mutations. We later on went back and asked, is this unique to BRCA mutation carriers, or is this something that we see in the general population? And as many of you know, ovarian cancer isn't very common, but even when we looked at the, what we call sporadic ovarian cancers, we found that they had these early cancers in their fallopian tube. So really BRCA1 kind of led the way to make us realize that many of these ovarian cancers actually come from the very end of the fallopian tube and then involve the ovary like a metastasis, essentially. The problem is that we don't see symptoms when these early cancers are in the tube. We only see them once they get to the ovary and they go large enough to create what are nonspecific symptoms uh, for ovarian cancer. And then once we diagnose them, unfortunately, most of the time they're quite advanced. 